Oh, hi. <laughs> Didn't see you there. My name's Arden, and you're watching Adult Take, where I teach you how to grow up your culinary game. Right now, I'm tying a cheese board, or more appropriately, a chef's board, which can have meats and cheeses on it. Okay, now that's all set up, why don't you guys come with me on a little journey into my kitchen so we can build this gorgeous board. Come on. Ah, youth. A time in which you could eat overly processed cheese and mystery meats out of a box. Those were the lunchable days, am I right? Well, we're grown up now. I can't tell you the social currency that a good cheese board can bring you. You might make some new friends or some new enemies. I'm looking at you, Karen. I'm getting you this time, girl. Oh boy, oh boy. Holy fromage, mon dieu! which means, my God, in French. So I'm gonna give you a little cheese primer. I'm gonna make it a little cheesier for you. <laughs> like easier. Anyway, this is triple brie. It is so delicious. This is one of the most palatable cheeses. And as you can see, I've kept him whole because the moment you cut through this layer, you're gonna get delicious, beautiful, fatty, Ooze, that's that triple creme. I'm very excited to put this on our board, 100%. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay him down over here. Next up, we're gonna go to America. This is a 12 year aged cheddar. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is something that's a little bit crystalline. You'll get some like crunchy little crystals, much like a Parmesan. But if you're someone who's like, I don't know what kind of cheese I like, but you like cheddar, like you're like basic bitch cheddar, you will love this. It's like elevated cheddar. We'll put her right over here. Next up, we've got maybe one of the stinkiest ones on here, but also one of the most exciting. And this guy is our truffle cheese. <laughs> this is our Italian cheese and, oh boy. <laughs> okay. This is a vein of truffle. Mm, this is that good stuff. This is a combination of a cow's and sheep's milk, so it still has that like little bit of funkiness from the sheep, but it's a very palatable, milky cheese that isn't too overpowering because when you have that much truffle in it, if this was like a very overpowering cheese, the truffle would be competing and it would just not be fun. So this is a balanced, delightful, nutty wonder of a cheese. And she's getting her place right there. Next up, a garrocha. This is a Spanish cheese. This is a goat's milk cheese, so it's a little bit Barnyardy, a little funky, good for an explorative cheese haver. The rind is inedible, but the inside is oh so very edible. Putting her right there. And last, but certainly not least, we have our Roquefort. Now this is a blue cheese, if you can't tell. And I know a lot of people are like, blue cheese? <laughs> Get that out of here, that stanky ass. I don't want it. You're wrong, first of all. And second of all, it's just something that you gotta kind of learn to love and also learn to deal with all of the crumbling, falling apart of it. This cheese is probably the most notorious of all cheeses because it does include mold, but the mold is safe to eat and it is also delicious. So give it a chance and it's probably good for your immune system, I would bet. <laughs> Ask your doctor if blue cheese is right for you. So make sure you have enough space to allow fun things in between and color as well. I mean, a big thing about cheese boards and chef's boards are that there is a visual appeal to it. So we're gonna add some really colorful friends that will make this like a feast for your eyes first. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this fruit. I'm gonna put him up here and grab my champagne grapes as well. <gasps> These guys are so beautiful. They're like little baby grapes. Look at them. They're so stupid. I can't tell you, every time I put one of these on a cheese board, people are like, oh my God, mini grapes? How is that even possible? I am going to be putting these all over the place to just show you how fancy I am. It's important to say as kind of an art rule, the rule of three or like the rule of separation is good. So like I wouldn't put two of these guys right next to each other because it doesn't feel like that's a cohesive look. I'm gonna put this guy over here so we feel like we got some separation. Now I'm gonna go in with a little red. I'm gonna put a couple of these little raspberries over here because I think a cute little grouping is good. And it's good to remember like this very acidic, like beautiful fruit works really well with something so creamy and something that can kind of lose itself a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with our strawberries and I'm gonna put these guys over at our goat's cheese because I think that's a really, really good pairing. I love goat's cheese and strawberries. I'm gonna also sprinkle blueberries over here near the brie as well because it's just like fun. And you know, contrasting colors with the red, why not? I might have a, a touch of the too much gene, so I'm going to stop there when it comes to fruit. I can always add more. 
Oh, now this, this is where things get serious, okay? This is honey with the full honeycomb in it, and this is amazing because it provides us so much extra texture and flavor and sweetness. I'm gonna put this guy over here just because I think it's so gorgeous and I want it to be kind of in the center. So next up, I'm gonna grab the very important olives, I love you, olives. These are the best. Do something for yourself and others and your molars and your dental work. There's like no reason to have pits in your olives. Get them pitted. So I'm just gonna put this guy right here to add a little green over here. Next up, we've got semi-dried tomatoes. These are also just a little bit sweet, so they add something to this in uh, a way that kind of a lot of the other savory stuff doesn't. So we're gonna put that guy back there. One thing that's really essential is mustard. This is brown, spicy ground mustard, and it is so good. It will just cut through a lot of the creaminess. I'm gonna put him right here. Beautiful. Next, sour cherry jam. Once again, fruity, lovely, acidic. I'm gonna make a little space next to our cheddar over here and put him over here, because why not? You get to be there. And last but certainly not least, we've got our lavender plum jelly. This one's very floral, a little bit crazy and fun, a little adventurous. Let's put him right here. Hell yeah, decisions. All right, now that we've got that all done, carbs. Who doesn't love carbs? These need to be everywhere. The worst thing that can happen for a cheese board is there aren't enough crackers. And you can get fun stuff, like these little breadsticks or these little seeded crackers over here. These are also gluten-free, which is awesome to have options. And then something like this little um, nut and seed cracker, which is like a very non-offensive, not overly salty cracker, but it adds texture, a little bit of sweetness, just lovely in general. So I'm just gonna kind of like stack these up around here and let them kind of do their own thing. That's cute. So I've got pickled pepidou peppers that we're gonna put in a little bowl. It's gonna be unreal. These are gonna add acid, a little bit of bitterness with all of this, and also just like a little bit of fermentation, which I think is lovely when you're talking about aged cheese. Look at that color. Beautiful. So now we need to make a little room because we have one last guest coming to this party and it might be a carnivore. Okay, first we've got our classic Sans Suissant, as the French say. This is a salami. It's a beautiful aged kind of marbled meat. This is gonna go really well with like crackers and things that can kind of take the brunt force of this. Let's kind of tuck these in behind our truffle cheese, lay them out real cute. All right, now we're gonna add prosciutto. It is a delicious aged meat that is very thin, very wispy. I would argue it's one of the most popular aged meats that you can have on a cheese board. And it's fun, because you can kind of make like a little folded rose out of it. A little meat rose. How romantic. And then we've got this super aged brisola. This guy, we're just gonna put him in a sweet little fold right back here and tuck him in. So this is gorgeous and looks very busy, but I'm still seeing a couple little extra spaces. So I'm gonna fill those spaces with chocolate covered almonds. Like who doesn't like chocolate covered almonds? Fight me. But this is gonna go really well with a lot of these cheeses. So I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle them around and leave little pockets. If you haven't tried chocolate and brie, <laughs> You haven't lived, darling. Get it together. It's one of life's greatest pleasures. Oh, that's my almond. That's my almond for me. Okay, obviously this is looking great and I want to try a little bit of it just to make sure I've got everything all good, obviously, not because I'm very hungry now and I'm salivating. But before I do that, we forgot one of the most important steps, taking photos of it for Instagram. Phone. And listen, no one can judge you for this. This is your art. So be extra. Do you see this? No shame. I've seen so many girls doing this at coffee shops and I'm like, you go girl. That coffee does look delicious. I get to eat this, right? Yes. I'm answering that for myself. Yes, me. You get to eat this now. I'm gonna let it brie. I am going to let it brie. I'm gonna get my brie on. My little chocolate almond. Oh my God. You better come to mama. Oh.
Mm. Oh boy, howdy do I love my job. Obviously I have a little bit too much of a sweet tooth and I choose dessert first, but I should probably leave this for the rest of my friends. I think they'll understand one bite, but if this entire thing is gone by the time they get here, that'll probably be a little bit embarrassing and they'll also have to wheel me to the ER, so I don't want that to happen. Um, so being an adult is trying out new fun flavors and textures uh, in the kitchen. And I mean like slam dunk, I like took you around the world. Why do you need to go on vacation? You got a vacation right here. You went to France, you went to Spain, you went all over the place. Try this out and join me as we enjoy the finer things in life. So get out there and grow up your cooking game.